Okay, in this video, we're gonna do print intro 10 in the print packets. This is going to be another bolt circle, actually two bolt circles. Uh, and we're going to create a, some stock geometry that is a cylinder or round now at this point. So the first thing I wanna do, start a new program. So we go to Program Manager, New, Conversational, Stock Geometry. So I'm gonna to go to Part Setup, More, Stock Geometry. This time we're gonna select Cylinder. Yes, I wanna manually size the stock. And now I get a direction, length, and radius. Length and radius are pretty self-explanatory. We're gonna put for the length what the thickness of the part is, it's 0.5. And for the radius, it's a 10 inch diameter, so it'll be a five inch radius. Now the direction, if we look at the image here on the right, this is actually a positive X direction. So the center of one of the faces or the center of the face that we created when we described our radius, that is, there's a zero, the zero is in the center of that face. The direction wants to know the body of the cylinder, what direction does it run? In this example, we see that here's the center of the top face and the body runs away in the x-axis in the positive direction. We could do a negative x where it would be the exact inverse or the opposite of what you see there. We're going to use negative z. That means the top center of our cylinder is our z0 and the cylinder runs away or runs negative from that surface down in the z-axis. Hopefully that makes some sense. Um, it will show up on graphics when you hit draw, so if you've done it incorrectly, you'll definitely get to see that. But that's what it means. From the face, that round face of the part, does the cylinder go up, down, right, left, front, or back? So it will run along the X, Y, or Z axis, either in the positive or negative direction. Again, ours is negative Z. Top center of the cylinder is our zero point. Very rarely in cylinders do you use these reference positions to move zero, but if you did, this is where we would move the, the stock around using these reference points. It will work exactly like it does in a box. Okay, so now we're going to set up some drills. We already have a two, uh, eighth inch center drill and a quarter inch drill, so we just need to put in a 7 16 drill. So I'm gonna to select tool number six. It's going to be a drill, 7 16 If I didn't know what that was, 7 divided by 16, enter, will give me that uh, decimal value for that, that particular drill. Again, I'm not going to worry about speeds and feeds and coolant conditions and things like that. So we're ready to create the block. Now, I'm going to go to... Um, Input, part programming, and I'm gonna select holes. Now there's no way to create, I could do two separate groups of locations, X and Y. I could do two bolt circles in the same block. And those bolt circles could be completely different in size, location than each other. What they cannot do is have different tools that are being used. So for example, in this outside six hole bolt circle on the part, it's going to use the center drill and the 7 16 drill. It does not use the quarter inch drill. The, the single location hole uses a center drill and a quarter inch drill, does not use the 7 16 drill. Had both of those used the same number and the same tool tools, then I could put them in the same block. But because they use different tools, I can't put them in the same block because it doesn't, there's no way to designate which ones are for which group, which bolt circle, and which ones are for the other bolt circle. So that being said, the first one we do, we're gonna do the six hole bolt circle around the outside. So I'm gonna do a drilling operation center drill, 
0.1 minus 0.125 using tool one. Next whole operation is going to be a drill using a drill. I'm going to do that 7 sixteenths, but I want to punch through the part at maybe minus 0.6. I don't remember the tool number, so I can hit select tool from list, group them by type of tool, or in this case, I want to group them by tool number because I just set this tool up. I know it's pretty high in the numbers. It's going to be tool six. I can either double click it or highlight it and hit select tool. Now I'm going to the next hole operation and it will be a bolt circle. We've got six holes in this bolt circle. The center is zero, zero. It's the center of the part. And now it's asking for the first hole, I'm sorry, the radius first. Uh, it's four inch diameter or eight inch diameter should be four inch radius. Now it's asking for the first hole. Well, there is nothing at three o'clock or zero degrees. We have one at 90 degrees and we have one down at 270 degrees. I'm going to put 90 in there. I just have to tell it where one of these holes are. Again, we have none to, to skip in this particular bolt circle. So that one is done. Now I'm going to go back up here to block, go to next block, and I'm going to create another holes block with another bolt circle. This time only having one hole in it. Holes, drill, center drill, 0.1 minus 0.125, tool one. Next hole, drilling with a drill. Let's break through. I uh, don't remember the tool number. It is tool number five. And we're going to do another bolt circle. Now I'm not given an X and Y location for this hole, even though there's only one. What I am given is a radius from the center and an angle from our Herco compass, if you will, the, the polar coordinates around the part. So it makes sense to do this as a bolt circle, not as a location. I'm going to do one hole in a bolt circle. The center will be zero, zero. It's a radius of two inches. And we're going to go 90 plus, oops, 90 plus 35, which will give us 125 degrees. Now, if I draw this, we get all of the holes in the bolt circle around the outside. And as you can see, there's one at 90 and one at 180, nothing here or here at uh, zero or 180. I'm sorry, there's one at 90 and 270, nothing at zero and 180. And here's our hole for that second bolt circle. Now, I can't, I can slow this down a little bit more and show you that our When we go to center drill this, we're center drilling all of these first ones, then drilling them. Then we're going to go in and we're going to center drill that single hole and then drill it. We obviously would want to prioritize those tool changes. So I could have done a couple of things. I could have copied and pasted both of the holes blocks taking out the drill in the first two and the center drill in the second two. And to be honest, that's the way a lot of people do that in Herco programming. They're used to doing it the old way when we didn't have a way to prioritize, and that's just the way they continue to do it. However, we have something called tool change optimization. That means I can turn on at the beginning of the program, I'm going to insert a block. It's an option, but, but most conversational users purchase this option. It's under miscellaneous. I'll keep hitting more until I see it. I'm going to tool optimize on. If I click that on, there's a couple settings here, which I'm going to cover in another video when we talk more about this. But basically, leaving it to the default settings is what we want to do almost all the time. 
But what happens is when it sees that in the program, it will prioritize all the tool changes after that. So now you'll see that it center drilled and drilled that both of them, both sets of holes before it goes in and it drills. So it's prioritizing the tool changes based on the, the order that we use them in the program. So hopefully that helped um, explain a little bit about the tool change optimization. Again, we're going to talk more about that in other videos, and we'll talk a little bit more about the settings and how to use them.